I'm building Orkish AI Next.js framework that can create SAAS AI projects really quickly, and I used it as a foundation for the Meal Planner AI project. And the most important thing that was missing in this framework was the token system. In this video, I'm going to guide you through the whole process, how are we first buying those tokens using Stripe payments, then we are saving them into our database using Drizzle, TRPC and Neon, and finally, we need to spend them in order to use our AI functions. This whole project is available on a public GitHub repository. And as always, you can try it out. You have the link in the description below. And if you have any questions for me, I'm always answering the YouTube comments. So make sure to ask whatever you need. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to demo the whole process. And then later we can check out the code and what happens behind the scenes. So this is our buy tokens page and currently here we see that we have zero tokens. So if we go to our AI selector and here we say give me 10 Orkish names, we are going to get not enough tokens. So we need to buy some tokens. I don't have a link yet, but I'm going directly onto buy tokens URL and here I'm going to buy 50 tokens. So I'm getting the Stripe UI and I'm going to type in the famous 424242 and here I'm typing some dates and security code and I'm buying tokens. So now it's congratulations, we are being redirected to, to this order complete payment intent and now we should have our tokens. So I'm going to the local host again, 3000 and here we see that we have now 50 tokens. So our payment was successful and now we can actually use our AI. So now I can say again, give me 10 Orkish names and this time we should get them. And here they are. So we have the AI response and this one is not yet live. I need to refresh, but we should see, yes, 49 tokens. So that is basically the whole process. We went from buying tokens to spending them. And now we need to see how this one looks in code. Let's start from our first page and that's the buy tokens. So this one, I'm going to the buy tokens component. Here it is. And here we have our standard like three cards, like you see them here for buying 10, 50 or 100 tokens. And we have the enum for that one. So we have 10, 50, 100. And based on that, we decide the price of each bundle. And the important thing is when we press actually this button to buy tokens, then we have this function where we are creating our client secret for our payment intent. So that's our TRPC mutation API endpoint. And there we are calling our Stripe API. We are creating a payment intent and we are returning our client secret, which is then used in our buy tokens component here to display our Stripe payment. And this whole payment window from Stripe is displayed only if we have the payment intent secret. So we are getting that one when we press the button. So here, if I press get 10 tokens, we are creating the payment intent secret and then we are showing our Stripe window. So the most important thing of our buy tokens component is this payment intent secret and the creation. And then when we have that one, we are going to our payment form. And here we have our actual form for buying tokens. So our whole form here goes from the payment element, which is imported from the Stripe API. And we here basically just created the submit button. And when we submit, we have this on submit function where we are confirming our Stripe payment. And if it is confirmed, we are being redirected to our order complete page. And on the order complete page, we are actually writing how many tokens we bought. So we have this congratulations and then we have component payment success. So here we are catching the payment intent from the URL. So let's buy more tokens so I can show that to you. So I'm going to buy 100 tokens and then you're going to see in the URL, we are going to get some data. 
so I'm buying it and now we are being this is the one payment intent and the secret payment intent client secret and this one magically appeared right now I totally forgot about that one I don't know why it's late I'm going to check it later and this payment intent client secret is really important because in our code here we are getting it from the URL and then we are saving it here on get payment intent so here we are checking if we already have an existing record so this is drizzle now here we are getting by that secret and if we already have it then we are going to console log already saved as you see i refreshed a bunch of times so we have now four times already saved and we are just going to return the amount which is this one so we paid here one dollar and if it doesn't exist we are going to get that amount of tokens to calculate it and then we are going to insert it into our database here we should also send an email i'm going to implement that later and now if we check here our tokens we have 149 tokens and that's the right amount of tokens that we bought and now here whenever we use our ai functions we need to say 149 minus 1 and to explain you that one better how i did it i'm going to open my schema so here you see that we have our purchases table so here we have the amount of tokens that was purchased by a user and we have the user's email and then the second table is the token spends so this is how many tokens each user spent and for each ai function we are writing a new row into token spends for our user that is using our application we can take the email from our clerk authentication and we are writing the right amount of tokens that user is spending for example we can put one for completion and five for images for example so now if we go to our ai router which has the completion images and everything ai related here you can see that on the beginning of each api endpoint we we are getting the total user tokens and those are just two queries so first one is getting all the purchases by one user if there were no purchases then he has zero tokens and then we are getting all token spends and after that we are just doing purchases minus token spends and we know the exact number of tokens for each user so with this number we know exactly how much tokens each user has and if it is zero or below we are returning a message not enough tokens you saw that in the beginning and then later we are getting our ai prompt and returning the result from ai and before returning the result we are inserting our new token spends and this time the amount is one because this is just a completion and this one should be cheap of course this one is totally flexible you can put here whatever you want and it shouldn't be maybe hard coded like this it should be decided somewhere else but this one is working so we are inserting our token spends and after that we have minus one tokens for our user and with this we are closing our whole circle of buying tokens paying them and spending them for our ai functions i hope you enjoyed this video warriors i wanted to share with you what i created with the orkish ai next.js framework and wanted to hear your opinion if you find this useful to create your own ai projects quickly you know where to find me and until next time make sure to join the horde and become a true web dev warrior